It's a brand new year, so that means brand new rankings. In today's video, we're gonna rank the best player at every single position going into the 2023 MLB season. This is gonna be fun. Now, a couple things I do wanna mention, I will be taking injury into account. So a guy like Jordan Alvarez, he's gonna be playing left field more often, so he's not gonna be a DH. Blame that on Michael Brantley. Also, I have no idea where Fernando Tatis Jr. is playing, so he's not gonna be in today's video, not because he sucks, but because I don't know where he's gonna be. We're gonna kick things off by talking about the number one pitcher for the 2023 MLB season. Now, I did put in Corbin Burns because I wanted to make sure everyone put some respect on his name. He has been so good over the last two years. That's another ground rule as well. I will be taking injury into account and also because of that, we're gonna talk about the last two seasons and combine them. Now, with that being said, obviously Corbin Burns, he wins in the innings pitch department, almost 370 innings compared to Jacob deGrom's 156. But if we look at the numbers, DeGrom has a 1.9 ERA, he has a 1.6 FIP, a near 14 and a half strikeouts per nine. So for me, Jacob DeGrom is my number one pitcher in baseball going into 2023. And honestly, it's not close. Well, actually I shouldn't say not close because there are a ton of studs in baseball. So maybe that's blasphemy. For the next position, I don't really think we have to talk too much about it because JT Romuto, I don't even have to talk about the last two seasons. What he did in 2022 alone deserves enough praise. He became the second catcher in baseball history to have a 20 home run, 20 stolen base season. He's the second guy ever to do that right behind Pudge Rodriguez, who is in the Hall of Fame. JT Ramuto had a near seven win season, according to baseball reference. He had 22 home runs, 21 stolen bases, a 130 OPS plus as a catcher. And of course, speaking of catchers, he is elite defensively. First base was a little bit challenging for me, so I decided to use the player comparison tool one more time. And as you can see, we have a bunch of elite first basemen in the game. If I missed anyone, please let me know in the comments. But these are my top five. Paul Goldschmidt, Freddie Freeman, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Pete Alonso, and Matt Olson. The one thing I do want to show you guys, if we talk about OPS+, Plus, Paul Goldschmidt is number one. And if we talk about war over the last two seasons, it's not even close. Paul Goldschmidt has a 14 war, a 159 OPS+, Plus since the beginning of 2021 so he's going to be playing pretty much every single day when he's healthy he is one of the best offensive players in baseball defensively i know he's not the best defender in all of baseball vladimir guerrero jr actually was the best defensive first baseman last year so I do want to make sure that we put some respect on Vladdy's name because he used to be a garbage defensive third baseman. He shifted to first base. He's become a gold lover there. So Vladimir Guerrero Jr. for me comes in third. I have Freddie Freeman in second, but Paul Goldschmidt Goldie, he's my best first baseman in 2023. I mean, the dude had an eight win season and a 180 OPS plus while hitting 317. That's ridiculous. He is a Hall of Famer in the making. Speaking of Hall of Famers in the making, that might ruffle some feathers, but... I don't care. Since 2017, when Jose Altuve and the Astros had their whole cheating debacle, and whether or not you believe that Jose was part of it, he has a combined 291 batting average with a 362 on base percentage and a 131 OPS plus. Jose Altuve is very good at baseball, whether someone's banging on a trash can or not. And if you don't believe that's the case, I'm sorry, you don't know ball. Over the last two seasons, Jose Altuve is averaging 36 doubles, 30 home runs, 12 stolen bases, and a 142 OPS plus. Just like JT Ramuto, I think that Jose Altuve is a very easy pick for the best second baseman. Although, like catcher, you could go with young guys like Adley Rutschman. If we're talking about young guys for second basemen, you could go with Andres Jimenez. So for me, Andres, yes, he's on the come up, but Jose Altuve, He's the best. The best third baseman in baseball. This is by far the hardest choice of the entire video. So uh, I chickened out. I made you guys do it. Now, before I reveal the results, I do want to show you guys the stats of all of these dudes over the last two seasons. I threw in Alex Bregman as an honorable mention, even though I don't think he is the best third baseman. Also, Austin Riley has been a menace to society over the last two years. But for me, it's between J-Ram, Machado, and Arenado. So if we filter by OPS+, plus, you have to give it to Jose Ramirez. If you filter by war, it's also Jose Ramirez. But according to you guys, you do not think that Jose Ramirez is the best third baseman in baseball and honestly as a Guardians fan I agree with this pick. The results are in Nolan Arenado is the best third baseman in baseball according to you guys, the voters. You have Machado at second and then you have J-Ram actually kind of close to Machado. He is the third best third baseman, but honestly, that feels a little bit disrespectful just like Mark said in his ranking videos. These are pretty much 1A, 1B, and 1C. If you went with J-Ram, cool. If you went with Machado, also cool. If you went with Nolan Arenado, 
fine by me. We all know that Nolan Arenado is a wizard at the hot corner. He is a six-time platinum glover. He is a 10-time gold glover. Every single season that he's played Major League Baseball, he's won a gold glove. That is absolutely insane. Combine that with his 42 doubles, 30 home runs, an 891 OPS with a 154 OPS plus in 2022. Yeah, Nolan Arenado, he's my pick as well with Machado at second and J-Ram at three if we had to really just boil it down. So I think we can all universally agree that Trey Turner is the best shortstop in baseball going into 2023, but here's a hot take for you guys. If the Padres didn't sign Xander Bogarts and Tatis was at shortstop, I probably would have put Tatis as the number one guy. But again, I have no idea if Fernando Tatis is going to be playing left field, center field, or if he's even going to be playing for the Padres. I, I just don't know. But Trey Turner's numbers over the last two seasons almost don't make sense. He is hitting 312 with a 132 OPS plus. He has 70 three doubles 59 stolen bases. We know that Trey Turner is not the best defensive shortstop. I actually would have preferred him to be a second baseman. He is actually pretty solid over there. But if we're talking about the best shortstop in baseball for this new season, I got to go with Trey Turner. You guys remember towards the beginning of today's video when I brought up that we will be accounting for injury? This is where Jordan Alvarez and Michael Brantley kind of come into play because Michael Brantley, even though he signed for $12 million, he's not going to be playing a lot of outfield. Jordan, yeah, your daddy, he is the Astros left field according to the 2023 depth chart on Fangraphs. So as much as I wanted to be biased and say Jordan is a DH, I don't think that's fair. I wanted to go with Steven Kwan as my best left fielder, but of course, Jordan Alvarez, he just came off a season of 37 home runs while hitting 306 with a 406 on base percentage, a 187 OPS plus. Jordan is easily the best left fielder in baseball, and even though a lot of people disrespect his defense with his glove, he's not that great, but put some respect on Jordan's arm. He has an absolute absolute cannon. Michael Nelson Trout. He is one of the main reasons why I decided to factor an injury because, I mean, I know that Julio Rodriguez and Michael Harris are some of the best young players that we've ever seen, but look at the last two years from my boy, Mike Trout. So over his last 155 games and almost full season, he has 36 doubles, 48 home runs while hitting 294 and has an insane 181 OPS plus. For his career, he has a 176 OPS plus. His career OPS plus would be a career high for most of the players in Major League Baseball. For me, I know that we all love J-Rod and we love Michael Harris and all of the other center fielders that you can bring up, but Michael Nelson Trout, He's the GOAT. I'm really happy that I did not have to choose between Aaron Judge and Bryce Harper because the fanboy in me probably would want to give some votes to Bryce Harper, but I would have been objective. Even if Bryce Harper was considered a right fielder, Aaron Judge, he has to be the number one right fielder in baseball for 2023. And again, if you don't agree with that, maybe you're a Dodgers fan and you say Mookie Betts or an Astros fan and you say Kyle Tucker. Those are both elite players. I absolutely love Betts and Tucker but they're not better than Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge over his last two seasons has 101 home runs, a 299 batting average, a 180 OPS plus. He won an MVP last year, obviously, with a record, an AL record, I should say, 62 home runs. He had a 211 OPS plus. Do we have to say anything else? He bet on himself. He won. Good for Aaron Judge, one of my favorite players of all time. And now that he's captain, I feel like he's going to pop off again for a 50 home run season. That's my hot take. Although, is it really a hot take to say that Aaron Judge is going to hit 50 home runs? I mean, he's done it twice now already in his short career. It's crazy to say, but no, Shohei Otani will not be in today's video. I don't think that he's the best starting pitcher in baseball. And to me, he's not the best designated hitter either. Before breaking his hand in the first half of 2022, Bryce Harper in 64 games had 21 doubles, 15 home runs, a 318 batting average, and a 985 OPS with the 175 OPS plus. And if you guys are new to baseball, maybe you don't remember, this came after Bryce Harper won full-blown MVP in 2021 with 42 doubles, 35 home runs, a 309 batting average, and a 179 OPS plus. Bryce Harper, to me, is one of the best hitters in all of baseball. And his second half, I wouldn't put a lot of weight into that. What he did in the postseason, I haven't even talked about the postseason. One of the greatest postseason stretches that we've ever seen. He is the chosen one. And Bryce Harper, to me, I think he solidified himself as a Hall of Famer this year. That might be a hot take as well. Edwin Diaz, I used to call him Ed Luz Diaz because he would implode every so often, but whether you bring up Josh Hader, Devin Williams, Emmanuel Classe, even a random guy like Evan Phillips, 
Edwin Diaz for me, a 1.31 ERA, 32 saves, 118 strikeouts in 62 innings. If you're trying to do quick maps in your head, please spare yourself. He had a 17.1 strikeouts per nine in 2022. I don't care about 2021. I know I'm kind of breaking the rules by not considering that because if you factor in 2021 and 2022, maybe you go with a manual class A. But for me, nope. Edwin Diaz, no longer Ed Lose. He's insane.